Good evening and welcome on this international conference global leaders meet today we have Stephanie Mam from Italy and Jamin Dumam from Sri Lanka Moloi Sir Diviani and our Jubert Sir they are here from India we are all connected and I am your host of this program connected myself from Dhaka Bangladesh very very welcome I hope all of you are doing very good. Today's topic is actually creating the awareness regarding women's empowerment, equality, justice, peace, and establishment of rights. So today we will uh, have some presentations from our international speakers, leaders, and guests who have joined from different countries, multinational cultures. So right now I'm going to connect from Dhaka to Italy. Stephanie, ma'am, how are you today? Oh, I'm very, very well. I'm fine. Thank you. Thanks. I'm welcoming you on this international platform. Hope you to hear from you very shortly. So, can I connect Ms. Jamindu from Sri Lanka? How are you, ma'am? Fine. Thank you. Okay. Very, very welcome and uh, very great evening, ma'am. We will really connect you very shortly. So, Mr. Jubair from India, how are you, sir, today? Uh, hello, all of you. Uh, hi to everyone. Salam, Namaste. Good evening. I'm fine. I'm good. I'm doing fine. What about you guys? Okay. I Thanks. hope everything is going. Thank you. We'll connect you shortly. Uh, Molek Kumar Ghoshal from India. How are you, sir? Hope you are doing great. First of all, I would like to extend my greetings in Bone Sera, Goswa, Guten Abend. Namaste, Namaskar, Namaskaram, Salaam Alaikum, and in Bengali, my native tongue, Namaskar. My full name is Moloi, and I happen to be a public servant, endeavor to render my service in public service, but I also believe in natural justice and equity for all. Not long ago, in the year 2017, an Italian academy called International Humanitarian Noble Academy, abbreviation IHUNA, which is based in Matera in Italy. I believe Madam from Italy, Miss from Italy knows about it, Matera one of the oldest cities, yes. they were pleased to elect me to be their honor president in the ground of humanity and humanitarian service which I render. And of course, I also try to deliver lectures whenever I get the opportunities or I'm requested to do so at Calcutta University. And I encourage humanity or humanity based upon human rights, natural justice and equity. And I remain in the service of those who need my help as their fellow global citizens. Thank you. Thank you. Ms. Diviani from India, how are you today? Can you please uh, tell about yourself, Ms. Diviani? Uh, yes, good evening to uh, all of you who is present here, not only here, to all the people in the world, my citizens, uh, my um, uh, who also to the elders who are here today i can see uh, also who are there uh, who are guiding me who are, uh, who are there to correct me uh, good evening to one and all uh, i am great today and uh, uh, sorry for that that i am a little bit of sick then too i will try my best that not to be uh, at a low voice i will be i will try my best to give my today performance thank you okay thanks a lot so first of all, I would like to connect Mrs. Stephanie from Italy to kindly introduce herself and also please present our great presentation, which have been already, we have seen on live on Facebook and we have shared to our many international groups. Mrs. Stephanie, can you please share your introductory part and please present your greatest presentation with all of our international leaders and guests here. Thank you, Mrs. Stephanie, for joining us. Okay, I try to share. Okay. Uh, 
Okay, what is it? Can you help me? <laughs> yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. Please open. Uh, it is already sharing. Can you see that? No. Uh, Ma'am, you have to press. You have to press the open button for the presentation. Your computer is showing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Right now we okay. can see the presentation. OK, thank you. So um, today I would like to focus your attention on uh, women and work, especially in Italy. That is my country, of course. And uh, uh, this is a um, short, simple presentation of how women are working in Italy nowadays. OK, and so uh, you can read, uh, but I would like to make some comments about what you are reading. Mm. So uh, there are 23 million people in jobs in Italy and uh, um, the, the female uh, who are employed are growing, but it is uh, the lowest rate in Europe when it comes to women in work. Um, only Greece is worse than Italy, okay? And this is something that um, bothers me. Um, even though recently the situation has improved, the number of women entering the job market has grown, but female employment uh, has, uh, we can say, uh, a part that is called part time work and uh, um, we can say that uh, this is a sort of pity because uh, women who are uh, bearing who are looking after their children are we can say compelled obliged to uh, to do this sort of part time job uh, because it is difficult to deal with uh, both family and work. So what is the problem? Uh, the balance between work and family and not only children, but also grandparents who need looking after. Because in Italy, uh, care work is uh, uh, nowadays and always left to women. Uh, what do women need more services, of course, for example, nurseries. Because in Italy, just 22.8% of children under the age of three have a place at nursery. So that's why um, women cannot come back to work uh, soon. The number has increased in recent years, especially in the north and in the center. I don't know if you know that in Italy we have a um, division between north and south. So we can say that the south is a little bit underdeveloped uh, in comparison compared to the north. And so the situation in the south of, it of Italy is worse than in the north. The biggest change, uh, the biggest change needed is a cultural one because it is important to share domestic work between men and women. Uh, I must admit that nowadays the youngest couples are beginning uh, this sort of uh, changing because uh, most men, most young men are sharing domestic work with their wives and this is something we are proud of. Um, another important step is in the field of education um, because uh, in Italy uh, more women are enrolling in universities and this is something we are proud of. Um, what about the legislation? Uh, for example, uh, Italy's maternity, Italy's maternity leave is the longest of any country in Europe. 150 days compared to 112 in France and Spain and 90 in Germany. And it is also one of the countries with the highest levels of remuneration during maternity leave, paying 80% of the full salary. I don't know if uh, you, you are uh, informed about it. 
And uh, um, another important issue is uh, uh, to create laws that can uh, divide maternity and paternity leave equally. This is important. And I must say that uh, nowadays our government has introduced a sort of law uh, which gives fathers the possibility to share um, paternity or maternity with their wives. Uh, and this is something I would say very good for our country. And uh, <laughs> I don't know if you have any questions or if you appreciated my presentation. It is very simple, but it is just my contribution for today. So thanks for your attention. Wow, great. Thanks a lot for sharing this valuable information with this international platform. So may I request our guest and international speaker, Ms. Jamindu, for presenting her presentation, please. Ms. Jamindu, are you ready, ma'am? Yeah, I'm ready. Uh, Please, can you share my screen, ma'am? Sorry, ma'am. Can you share my screen? Yeah, yeah, I'm sharing now. Is it visible? Not yet. Yes. Visible? Yes, now can be seen. Okay. Okay, ma'am. Please carry on. Is it uh, the first slide you want to show, ma'am? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, ma'am. So, today the current topic is that we have to talk is the uh, women's rights. So, when we talk about uh, women's rights, uh, what I want to present here is uh, that women's rights and how women have been victimized due to the systems of particular countries and the culture as well. In this situation, culture plays a major role. It means these or these kinds of things happen due to the culture, especially how people behave and how people think. In this problem, Actually, we have to talk about this issue because we are in an Asian country. These kinds of situations thoroughly affect women living in Asian countries. In my country, Sri Lanka has the same problem. Mostly, in, mostly it thoroughly affects uh, if the people are still conventional. They don't like to change. So that is the reason. In the past, when we remember our grandparents, and grandmother was the one who suffered. It means because of uh, a lot of work. I'm not uh, talking about anything private matter of myself, but uh, it's a general, it's a, it's a common thing for all. Those days in past, uh, women were restricted to live freely, to be socialized in Sri Lanka those days, right? Uh, the woman was limited only to the kitchen. So, uh, she was not for any other acceptable thing, but she was uh, born to cook, to do all the household work, and to have children, and to look after children. So, uh, at that time, they were not given a proper education. But now the things have been changed. But some are still remaining. 
women work and earn, they uh, become socialized by them. They learn, but uh, cooking a part is left to her. Second slide, ma'am. Uh, and yes, in Europe, both uh, husband and wife uh, get together and they cook. Uh, it is not left only as a duty to be done by wife. But here, uh, it is uh, something compulsory uh, to the wife, right? Uh, so, even the present situation, uh, there are some uh, conventional ideas in people. Even in marriage, when we talk about marriage, though a girl is well educated and earn uh, even in the in the marriage, though a girl is well educated and earn, the good party expects a dowry from her. That is because of the influence in the past. So in the past. Uh, women were not educated, so they, they uh, when, when they get married, so they wanted to give a dowry. So, uh, even in present, even at present, though they work, though they earn, uh, they have to give the give dowry to bride, uh, that uh, groom's party, I mean from the bride's party. So, uh, sometimes maybe that... Uh, because his uh, wife is uh, earning a lot more than husband, but uh, the things have not been changed. So we want to think how unfair such situations are. So for a solution, what we have to do is educate people to think in a new way without causing the better let them know what is happening in uh, develop uh, what is happening. So, if we force them, they, they think uh, they want to do by force. Uh, we have to let them understand the outside. So, mostly, as I know, countries like uh, Denmark, Sweden, Finland, like uh, Italy, or uh, so Scandinavian countries, mostly the things have been changed. So, both work, both uh, do uh, household activities. There is no discrimination. So. Uh, but in Sri Lanka, there is gender discrimination, uh, caste discrimination, class discrimination, and lot of discriminations. So we have to stop it. We have to put the full stop to these things. So uh, finally, I what I have to bring out in uh, such prob such a problem is that to be radical. So if we become radical, most of the problems will be changed. Everything will be solved if people think in a new way. So, teach the younger generation how to be and how to do. Then we will be able to see a better environment in future. Okay. So, that's yeah, that's all what I have to talk about this uh, current topic. So, thank you. Thank you for listening and have a nice day. Thank you. The other slides are like this. <laughs> and uh, this is the most beautiful and uh, graceful and very talented personality that you can see. Yeah. Thanks a lot. So, Divyani, do you like to connect your presentation right at this moment? Yes, please. Just a second. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, please connect your presentation. I'm going to connect our dearest international guests and the leader, Moloy Kumar Ghosh from India. Moloy Kumar Ghoshal from India. Ghoshal from India. Okay. You can able to see us? Yes, 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 yes. It is visible. Yes. Okay, so good evening to one and all. Because we all know that uh, if we speak a thousand times also, people will not listen that uh, more faster that what we show they is uh, uh, seeing faster. So here I am presenting a presentation. 
Um, here I was, uh, that is women empowerment. Today our topic, child abusement and uh, stop violence. Uh, all of this uh, inequality, what is happening in every country, not only India. Uh, we are very familiar with all these topics that what is going on in our surrounding. As a student, I am also familiar with this. So the problems, uh, what we can see in our society are not created by the person, it is created by us itself. Because we only don't uh, see uh, before it uh, is generating into a big, big issues. When a small problem is created, we ignore that. If uh, when, uh, there was a, before only there was a no freedom for girls, now, uh, now it is a, a little bit of freedom, but not freely. The girls can go night everywhere. It is not freely, we can see. Yes, uh, women are doing job, but what? Oh, not all women are doing. Only 40 to 50 percent are uh, empowered. Only 50, 40 to 50 percent are working in a office. That also they are working in office. Then to their harass. Then many cases are occurring. So only that is uh, duty. We are creating our problems. We are. We have to uh, find a solution for that. Another is that uh, uh, you can see there is a many. Uh, hands together that if we are together then we can only end with this situation if we raise our voice if we break our silence then only we can uh, go ahead and take a step for ourselves because we know nobody is there if a baby is also cried uh, uh, mothers don't uh, understand why uh, he or she is crying if uh, he or she don't cry mother also don't feed the me then also we are uh, we are too grown up so we have to raise our voice by our own we have to break the silence we have to create our own safety by our own self. Another is that the women have got to make the world safe. But uh, for men, women have created the world safe. But what about the women? First, they have uh, they have given a uh, birth to uh, babies. Then also they are becoming the man. Then what about us? We are also the part of our society. We are also the part of a world then why you can't save us? Mainly we can see that why a uh, girl are not safe because of the man's. Uh, we, why cases are occurring because of the man's. So first, the mentality of the man should be uh, clear. The vision of the man should be clear about the girls. If they will not think bad about the girls, then there will be no problem occurring in the surrounding. Another, I have that there are uh, helpline numbers for women that they can call, but you know, 73% of the women does not know the helpline number also. Means they don't know what is the advantage of the helpline numbers. There are 27% who knew about the helpline numbers, but 13% they have not used even it because they think if I will complain, if I will call for the help, um, there will be no help there. I don't know what is the reason that they are not even in pain. I think the problem. They are not facing the uh, what is going on. Forty percent they have uh, yes they have done the fifty nine percent they have not uh, even uh, no numbers and not even try to means uh, take step for them. So then what will be the uh, uh, you see that they are no that we have said that we are freedom. Women are working. Cases are increasing day by day. It is not decreasing. So we have to first take the steps. Then only the cases will be decreased. Uh, it is not someone will come for you. Some you will uh, show up. one or two cases are uh, shown in the newspaper or television. It does not mean there are only one and two cases. There are thousands of cases, but they are not recorded in the uh, police station or somewhere. It's time that uh, we have to stop. Uh, hiding the child abuse many parents are there that they are hiding their child if something is wrong with their child but we have to the parents also should understand that they should not have because if one parents also hide the thousand cases are increasing by them because thousand are also not raising the voice but if one will raise the voice thousand will automatically raise their voice this is a thought i will try to fight but why Always my close ones only stop me. We can see that the women tries to fight, but only their close ones, their parents, their guardians, uh, their loved ones only stop them to fight. But don't think that we are the stop. If one will support me, if no one will support me also, then also I will stand for myself because I am enough for myself. All women are empowered in themselves only. They don't need someone to support them. They don't need someone to step by them.
Uh, here is a thought that support me and love me. I will shower a love. If you try to break us, we will make your life more worse. If a woman you support you, a shower a love, she will definitely shower your love. She will make your life like a beautiful more than heaven. But if you tries to break her, if you tries to hurt her, then she will one day she one day okay one day she will tolerate, two days she will tolerate, but the third day she will stand and make your life more worse than what you think. Yet we can see that equality, right? There is a many topics are there about not only the women's but about the country's people that gender equality is there. Equal rights are there for women. Many things the women have to tolerate in the society that we don't think also about that. But many problems are that uh, social media are there. Then society talks are there. Then uh, equal, they don't get equal right uh, now. We are living in a 2021. Then also the women are not getting equal rights and equal values in the society of how they're re, uh, respecting the men. They are not respecting the same as to the women. They do, don't think that women are at the same level. Another is that uh, women are as pure as the fire. No one has the right to question them without a um, when they are not wrong. Many people, when they come late night from the work, they directly question that why you are late, why you got uh, too much uh, night uh, walks, why it means. So this is not the question, why men can walk outside and why not women can walk outside at night. This is also the question that women are facing always day to day life. They are facing this problem. This we can see that uh, top female dominated jobs in uh, we, in healthcare, suppose they are getting 80% dominated, means we can see that in uh, okay, every uh, field there are women working, but we can see in every field they are dominating more women, they are not giving the job to women, the women they are they have to face a lot of problem. You can see that what is the percentage of every country, not only the India, yes, uh, one more is that if you touch me without my permission you have to pay for it and i mean i it is not to take don't take it easy it is uh, my words are not likely you can see it is uh, the uh, what is uh, there are many cases there are many uh, cells are there where we can complain if the women so no it means no no ha one has the permission without a women permission no one has the right to touch her uh, this is the uh, last one that a woman is a sister, a mother, a wife, a friend, and all, all we can see that what the women have to face, what the women is doing for the society, but also they are not getting the right place, not getting the right values. Thank you. Wow, super. You should uh, deserve a great clap from all of us. Great clap. Please, our international guest, I would request all of you, please clap for our Divyani. Being such a teenage teenager, she has made and I want to make, I want to let you all know she is unwell. She has just come from hospital and I have just called her maybe before one hour and I asked her to make the presentation and she prepared it so brilliantly. Mind blowing yeah. Diviani. Fabulous. I salute you from the bottom of my Thank you, Divya. This is just a small thing because I also want that my not only my country, but also all country. I am also a woman. I am also a girl. I also want that no one should face what other girls are facing. I also want that all girls should be live freely. They have their rights to live in a freedom society. They have their rights to do job. They have their right that they can go at a night and work for their family. They can earn. We don't want to always listen to no, always at home, no, stepping out yeah. also, no, in office also, no. We don't want that. So it is just a small thing that I'm doing for my society, my country, not only for my country, but also for the other country. Thank yeah. you. Good. Thanks a lot. Uh, we will come to connect our Jubert sir. And uh, I, I bet on this that when Jubert sir will speak, everyone will be just listening and listening. With his, <laughs> he can spell bound everyone's mind. That is for sure. Okay. Ah, okay, and right now, this is our great moment to connect international leader and a speaker, our respected Mola Kumar Ghoshal from India. I want to connect him. Can you please speak your greatest statement, dearest Mola Kumar Ghoshal from India? 
first of all, by thanking Professor Dr. Monira Sultana Poppy for the compliment she made. I most humbly admit that I do not deserve those compliments. I'm merely a very modest public servant. Um, before I proceed, I crave leave to draw your kind attention to a tragic fact which ought to be known by all of us if it is not already known. A certain country in the Middle East, I'm not going to name the country, but uh, you may be pleased to recall the name on your own, a country which is divided between Asia and Europe has withdrawn today from so-called Istanbul Convention. This Istanbul Convention certainly is one of the instruments by which the world tries to protect the rights mainly of women. Because in that particular country which has withdrawn, women are not merely harassed, abused, misused, but even killed by their husbands. That is at least even broadcast by the BBC World Service, which I believe is one of the most impartial media of the world. Even this afternoon, I heard that news to my great concerns and worries. Now, returning to the point made by our very positive minded, I should say, lady from India, young lady, and returning from hospital, she delivered this wonderful message. And you I would like to add a few things. It is true that often women are abused. Children are abused, babies are abused. And the parents often do not disclose these facts to others or even discourage the victims to voice their grievances. But often the parents feel the pressure of the community surrounding. That means if suddenly a girl goes onto the street and says, look, I have been molested by such and such person. And maybe that person is put into jail. The whole community, if that person, happen, the offender happens to be from the neighborhood, the whole community comes and surrounds the house and causes a lot of problems. And since the police authorities are often not present on the scene, many wrongful things happen. Being a man, I experienced this in my own neighborhood. My glass windows were broken. A bomb was planted on, in my letterbox, which exploded, shattering not only my window, uh, windows of my house, but a house opposite my residence. My calling bell was broken. My house was covered with filth from the drain. All those things happened because I endeavored to speak out. But of course, those people discovered that I could not be bent. I do not bend myself. So just for one moment. No, it's not my phone, it's someone else's. Because I do not bend myself for injustice, in fact, I try to stand upright against injustice, at last they had to give up. But you see, this is one of the major problems in our country. But this is also quite tragic, even pathetic, because many of the old cultures or civilizations of the world, which includes ours, but also in Europe, of course, both Greece and Italy, mentioned by a learned lady speaker from Italy, had women's rights in the past. Even William Shakespeare wrote two marvelous pieces. One is, of course, called Julius Caesar, in which he portrayed the power that the Hello, can you hear me? See me? Yes, can you yes. still hear me? See me? Yes, because I see. Yes, yes. I, he I showed Portia, the wife of Octavius, sorry, the, uh, Brutus, Brutus, the wife of Brutus, was a very powerful woman. According to William <clears throat> Shakespeare, she swallowed fire to show her patience. No, sorry, she first burnt her hand 
to keep a secret and later even swallowed fire. Even in The Merchant of Venice, written by William Shakespeare, we see Portia becomes the heroine who, who is able to ensure that Shylock is the offender and ought to be punished, whereas Antonio should not be penalized. She was the one who appeared as an advocate. But it is a tragic fact that throughout the world, for one reason or another, women have been oppressed and they are still being oppressed. But this is, of course, as also our young speaker uh, from India spoke out, we are often at fault. We allow this to happen. If we allow our children, our sisters, our wives to speak out, then the situation will be quite different. Okay. I, I want to just briefly add, if I'm not wrong, both Greece and Italy are also signatory to the European Convention on Human Rights. And I just recall an incident not long ago in Germany, women were not allowed to take part in active military activities like carrying a weapon. They were allowed to do certain work, but were not permitted. Then one of the ladies took this matter throughout all the court judicial system, even to the European Commission of Human Rights, which presented her case before the Europe, European Commission, sorry, European Court of Human Rights sitting at Strasbourg. And then, of course, the court ensured that she and her fellow country women would be permitted to join the army in the same manner as men would be able to do so. Thank you. Okay. Thanks. Uh, I can see my uh, one of the greatest leader and a speaker and model international personality, Ms. Karishma Moni. Dr. Karishma Moni has joined us. Dr. Karishma Moni, how are you today? And very, very welcome on this international platform. Here you can see new faces, our international leaders. I would like to connect you for the very much important topic today that women's empowerment, women's rights, peace, justice, and freedom. How we can establish these women's rights? Karishma, can you please guide us, show light from your own experience and view? Dr. Karishma Muni from India. Uh, hi, greetings to everyone. And it is a wonderful time to see you all back. Uh, because uh, just uh, Monira and I was discussing, I was in my silence meditation program and due to that I would uh, have not attended her conference and it's wonderful to be back on her conference. Uh, so hi to all the new faces as well as to Mr. Malay and Monira, my sister. And uh, the question you have arised, Monira, is the same question that do women want their right does women want their right? You know, always we are talking about the rights of women, but if the woman wants their right, then why they have not started the asking for the rights from their own home, from their own self? You know, from, from the childhood, if, if their parents are obstructing her, uh, to not to do this, not to do, and the boy is given a uh, freedom and the girl is not given a freedom, then why the woman at that time did not start it uh, to oppose that? Why not the same freedom like a boy is given to me? So the first and foremost question arises from that thing that do you want your rights? First, first, that should be there. If yes, then start from your home. Leave the world, forget about everything, forget about your rights, leave the home. But first, start from your childhood, start from your home that do you want your rights? This is the first priority question. And then, Monira, I have been yeah. fighting with two cases presently. If, if I don't know whether you are looking at my status or social media or not, but as a generalist, I'm fighting uh, for the two things. 
uh, presently there was a misbehavior done to me and i am the only journalist to protest against that misbehavior although it was done with five of the press reporters but i am only one to stand in the battlefield you know being a girl and they all are men they all ran, ran away and i am only girl standing and fighting for my rights you know so so are you sure you are you are alone you are alone i joined the battle i joined the battle can you yes alone alone faces? fighting alone can you see the faces here yes, I, here can you I, see the faces with you yes i can see i can see Uh, there is a beautiful lady. Then our Neha is there. Mati is there. Malay sir is there. Then some Mohammad Zubair sir is also there. I can see four to five faces. Uh, uh, those who are there. But but uh, I I just want to raise a similar question which you have raised that if you want your rights then you should start from the childhood and from your own home. The same freedom as your brother is getting, you should be also getting the same freedom. that is your first right yeah true agree right. agree right. bravo bravo and i want to add one thing that to, to karishma she is never alone she is never alone sorry to tell you that karishma my work actually our work this initiative is stephania from italy she has joined jubair sir from india monoj sir from india dr karishma from india and neha divyani from india and myself from dhaka bangladesh we are here from multinational countries we want to all feel that you are never ever alone yeah yeah thank okay? you and i can say at the top of my voice i want to raise my hand my voice my strength my blood sweat power everything to all our victims all our ladies and children and who are feeling alone we want to say that you are never alone forget about past whatever has happened just happened now this is the new world this is the new beginning and we are working so forget that what has happened now dr karishma moni i want to tell you that even your parents for god's sake don't misunderstand me even if there is no one just think god is with you god is enough for you and that is our belief and our strength that's enough so i will of course add my points can i connect mohammad jubair sir dr karishma moni jubair sir is a magician when he speaks everyone just becomes different just i am inviting our magician magical voice great leader our mohammad jubair from india can i connect you and please can i have yeah. a wonder man on yeah, our yeah thank you uh, thank you ma'am am i audible yes, yes you are very much audible yeah yeah thank you for provi providing me the opportunity to speak again and um, you praise me a lot i am not that kind of person uh, but uh, uh, yesterday we talked uh, we talked about this topic uh, women empowerment means uh, freedom of women you know from the vicious grips of social economical and political caste and gender based discrimination so it means granting women the freedom to make life choices so women empowerment itself elaborates uh, social rights political rights economical stability and judicial strength and like uh, karishma madam was saying if if uh, government have made many laws many commissions are there but uh, when we not we are not aware we are not uh, using our laws and you are not able to use them so what is the benefit of all those things so the sustainable development goals put uh, uh, gender equality at the heart of the international agenda united nations also you know have done a good job the realization of women's human rights is Uh, is a goal in itself and it is uh, also a you know driver of democracy sustainable development and poverty eradication so discrimination against women prevents girls and women from living a good life and hampers economic development and uh, issues related to women's rights are often uh, a factor in political conflicts and form a part of ba backdrop and uh, ex uh, you know we intend to change this we cannot allow religion or culture because 
there are lots of traditions here in the subcontinent traditional and customs are there uh, every every work done will be uh, you know will be done by girl and we cannot allow religion or culture to be used as an excuse for the discrimination of women the fundamental principle principle of human right is uh, uh, that uh, they are universal so they have equal opportunities and they have to participate and uh, man and women both are the complement of each other and we have to support each other so we have to aware about rights and we will work to reverse the uh, you know setbacks in the area of uh, uh, the women rights that we have seen in certain countries so uh, as i uh, you know how important are human rights uh, ultimate human rights are the basis of everything people cherish about their way of life in the absence of rights you know no personal security no freedom no opportunity no participation so in in india you know government have made many policies many, they have started many commissions and uh, uh, they are supporting women but uh, in the practical manner if uh, the attitude of the society will not change if uh, it will start from the school it will start from the curriculum it will start from the your home so when will it will start the things will change again so we are all entitled to human rights this includes the rights to live uh, free from violence and discrimination to enjoy the highest attainable standard of physical and mental health to be educated to girls to own property you know for many for many years women rights movement have fought hard to address the this inequality and come campaigning to change laws or taking to the streets to demand their rights and respect it but in the practical manner we have to do a lot of work right now still we have to work a lot in our society every day in our in every country in the world women are confront confronted by discrimination and inequality the face of violence rape abuse unequal treatment at home and not not uh, not to provide we are not providing them the equal opportunities at our homes at workplace they are facing a lot of discrimination and uh, in their wide communities so uh, you know women form uh, the majority of living in poverty so they have fewer resources less power and uh, the male dominant society decision making are in the hands of men man so violence is among most severe human rights violations and uh, women are often you know sometimes attacked and raped raped or or uh, you know like uh, uh, mamba saying uh, she is fighting uh, someone uh, she is fighting against someone so these are the things uh, which are happening in our society so under international treaties such as convention of, of on the elimination of all forms of discrimination against women government have a legal obligation to protect women from violence to promote the human rights of uh, all women and to ensure them in practical manner because when our attitude will not change we will not pro- government have made the policies but they should know about their rights they have to come uh, come Uh, come across and they have to uh, apply all those things in their practical life so uh, so un U- united nations women advocates and provides technical assistance to ensure that the states create the implement laws legal support policies and plans to protect women against multiple form of you know violence and uh, uh, you know we have to promote the promote the respect and ensure women's exercise of freedom of opinion and uh, expression both uh, in in both life in every aspect of life you can say we have to give permit uh, permit them to job we have to we have to uh, you know equally we have to as a parent or as a society member as a human being we have to provide them opportunity because they are the vital part and they will uh, you know play vital role in the development of our country or the world so to ensure that women and girls exercising their rights uh, to freedom of opinion and the uh, expressions are not uh, discriminated against particularly particularly in employment and uh, when we talk about the employment or you know financial conditions uh, women are no, uh, in villages in india women women are not women are not allowed to go uh, outside to to do job so if they are not stable in their employment so this would be difficult the justice system the social system you know there are lots of things are there but we have to facilitate the full equal and effective participation and free communication of uh, all women at all levels of decision making even in the decision making men males are making all the decision in the families so we have to you know we have to consider females as well in the nation, in the in our decision making and uh, to facilitate to facilitate uh, uh, equal participation in uh, you know 
for example to provide women and girls with access and effective remedies uh, and uh, you know uh, as I, I as i mentioned yesterday uh, that in order to awake people uh, it is people who have to be awakened and uh, and uh, india is in the transition phase in cities things have been little bit changed you can say but in the village is still the customs and traditions are there and women are still facing a lot of problems there so uh, when we talk about the uh, decision making power when we talk about the freedom of movement when we talk about the access of education when we talk about the access of employment and exposure to media and domestic violence and they are not aware about their rights and then sometimes they know but they they are they they are introvert in nature and they are facing you know, uh, problems to show in front of others they are not complaining so they are you know bearing all the things and uh, you know we have to establish high level corporate leadership uh, for gender equality and treat all women and men fairly at work and uh, respect uh, and uh, you know support human rights and uh, non discrimination and ensure their health safety safety is a big issue here in you know in subcontinent and because uh, uh, women go to the you know schools women go to the colleges they are going to uh, work uh, workplaces so promote education and uh, education doesn't mean that we are just giving the information to them we have to uh, develop their etiquettes we have to uh, develop their morality we have to develop the we have to uh, develop how what is the role of women in the society and uh, what uh, what they are doing in our society and they are play they are playing a vital role to promote equality through community and they are playing uh, they are, they are they are doing a good job and uh, when we talk about the lack of education girls have we have to work uh, in that area in the cur curriculum we have to make some changes and traditional views uh, traditionally uh, you know people are following all those things and uh, and uh, they are you know imposing everything on girls so financial they are not supporting they are not you know everybody must be independent in the society if they they are willing to work they are if they are willing to uh, get education so provide them mobility provide them equal opportunities we are talking about the inclusive education we are talking about the rights of every everybody's right but uh, what we are doing for that so improves we have to improve our attitude we have to we have to provide them opportunities and we have to be as it as a team we have to work a lot you know uh, leadership promotes gender equality upon you know when we talk about the equal opportunity inclusion and non discrimination so pay equal uh, remuneration or you can say salaries uh, at the workplaces to them ensure that workplace policies and practices are free from uh, gender based dis discrimination and implement gender sensitive uh, sense and some sensitivity also uh, should be start uh, you know initiative initiative so assure sufficient participation of women must be increased and uh, when we talk about the health and safety you know taking into account different differential impacts on women and men and uh, a zero tolerance policy towards all forms of violence must be you know started uh, including verbal and physical abuse or any prevent sexual harassment so strive to offer health insurance and respect women and men workers uh, rights and uh, our constitution has provided a lot of things and uh, when we talk about the education and training we, uh, informally you know learning is lifelong process so we have to aware every individual of the society as a teacher we are using this platform to aware the people but uh, uh, it is the responsibility of every person to ensure equal access to all come all support to the women so provide these things so expand uh, and provide them the business opportunities as well so these are the things we can do in our uh, society then the things will change as i uh, mentioned as i told you earlier in the my last uh, uh, conference that uh, government have started many policies uh, to you know increase the participation of uh, girls for example beti bachao beti padhao scheme started by government uh, you know teach teach girls and you know protect girls and ujwal yojana and there are many laws like dowry provision act uh, Uh, and uh, indian penal code hindu marriage act uh, there are lots of domestic violence act uh, there are lots of many legal support minor and uh, women commission is there but like karishma ma'am was saying that uh, if women are not aware if they are they have not uh, willing 
to you know uh, to use all these things so nothing will be happen so we have to aware them uh, aware every 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 girl child aware every person in the society and the women representation half of the world's population because you know women have you know great role and they are doing a lot of work and they their duties uh, not only to work at home or there is duty not only uh, to give birth to child their duty is different because they are they are also human being they have heart they want to te- learn they want to uh, to work with others so uh, you know until the women are given the same opportunities that the men are so things will change in the future uh, but the things are that we have to follow all these things in the pro- in the and uh, we have to implement all those uh, you know policies in the practical manner in our societies so greatest need of our is change of social attitude of the society the dream of women empowerment shall not be fulfilled otherwise so these um, this is my point uh, and uh, this is all about the rights of uh, women i am saying and uh, so discrimination against women will be you know stop when the when the curriculum will change when the when the at the early ages in the school in the college we will uh, we have to mold our students in that uh, you know teacher is an artist and he can he has art and uh, he can mold their students according to their desired goals so this is the important thing and in the family as well customs and traditions are there we have to uh, you know uh, you left all those customs which are not beneficial for the society so these are the things we can do for the development of uh, you know women and uh, we can increase the empowerment because uh, you know when we talk about uh, freedom of movement uh, uh, still i believe, still i observe that many in many families women are not allowed to uh, go outside without permission and uh, freedom of movement is a right of uh, right to move around freely as the move, as the men are moving so they may not be allowed to have their own Uh, you know decisions so as uh, you know uh, so this is the this is these are the things which are happening in the and the other thing is the gender based violence they are bearing and bearing and bearing and they are not saying to uh, they uh, they are not complaining they are not saying they are not opposing there are lots of rights uh, but they have to fight and we have to uh, you know aware uh, the society about it so workplace discrimination is also there sometimes you, you feel the workplace uh, women are working in schools in colleges in industries in multinational companies so they still they are you know facing a lot of problems there so discrimi- these are the discrimination and even un united nations also you know uh, trying to you know improve the situation of the women around the globe so we have to do all those things that would be you know very beneficial for all of us thank you super super so uh, I want to know that yes, in your sir. screen is there any anything visible right now? No, no. No. Now yes, it's visible. Sir. This one? Yeah, yeah, visible. Okay.
Thank you. Thanks for your patience. Yeah. So uh, I want to ask our dearest Diviani that uh, do you think uh, what our Dr. Karishma Moni has said seriously? I want to know that is really women a law? I will add you, but Stephania, I want to know from you. Can you please unmute your microphone, Stephania? I want to know from you and then Diviani. Stephania from Italy, she has joined. And may I know, after her great presentation, after so many women's voice, Dr. Karishma Moni, and uh, we had also another sister from Sri Lanka, Ms. Jamindu. And uh, I, I have seen her message, she couldn't join again. I don't know what is the technical issue. Can you please tell me, is women in Italy feeling alone and feeling helpless, Stefania? Mm. I think sometimes, sometimes they feel alone, but there, there is a net of women who are fighting against uh, solitude, against loneliness. So we are less alone now, we can say, thanks to laws, uh, thanks to awareness, thanks to education, Thanks to you men who are here to testify that it is possible to change the world. So thank you for your contribution. OK, uh, thanks for your great comment. May I know, Diviani, being a, being a teenager, what is your point of view? Are we alone? Seriously? Uh, yes, dear. before I will start, I will uh, want to tell Karishma, ma'am, that ma'am you told that you are alone but i will tell you that you are enough for yes yourself because you have reached this level means you are enough you have worked hard you have tried you have uh, fighting with others for yourself for your safety then you are enough for yourself you don't need other I, I have told as i have presented in my presentation also that women are empowered in themselves itself they are strong in themselves yes we can understand some sometimes they feel alone because they don't get support from the family members. They don't get support from the loved ones. But uh, uh, yes, I uh, really totally uh, agree with the ma'am. What uh, now ma'am have told that there are many laws issues. Uh, the uh, government has uh, supported. But uh, yes, uh, we are not totally alone. But sometimes we feel alone. As being a teenager, yes, I have also faced not totally. We are also not uh, getting freedom. We are also girls. We are living. See, uh, like I can. Uh, that from uh, 1857 uh, when uh, Rani Lakshmi Bai started to fight for their country. She was a girl and she started to fight for their country and why we can't fight for our, uh, her country and she, uh, she died for her country. She, uh, um, she was so uh, empowered in herself that she can fight for others. Then we are just fighting for ourselves. Then th this is not a big issue that we are fighting for. If we fight for others, yes, we feel alone, but we are empowered in ourselves. We have many support. Yes, this channel is also giving us some very big support that we can keep our point of view on this. Not only these channels, many things are there. Now, on, now social media are there. We, uh, you can uh, speak and uh, share one post on social media and many people are supporting. 
but moral support uh, then mental support should be also there which can be provided by your parents your guardians first you have to stand you have to make up your mind that yes you are not alone you're not lonely then only you can fight for yourself thank you okay uh, jubair sir what is your yes, point of view women really feeling alone is it is it possible is it uh, is it natural or normal actually you, you know it is it is as i told you earlier that it is uh, it is all about the teachings of the family uh, i am always talk about the morality and the the etiquettes what we learn at our families like if i am a good father if i am a good brother if i am a good uh, you know husband so we have to make all society in that manner we have to mold them in such a, in, in a such a way where women uh, won't be feel alone yeah it's right they are feeling alone because individual difference differences are there in the society uh, we all are uh, you know we all have different in their in their spirituality in their you know mental development in the physically mentally we are we all are different and we all have the different aptitude but uh, as far as the uh, you know concern of loneliness of women we have to provide them the opportunity and we have to provide them the social and emotional support because if you are providing them uh, the social and emotional support in the family for example if i have two kids my girl and boy and i am pro i am treating equally with both of them and uh, even sometimes uh, you know i have two kids and i i you know you, know, you can't believe that i my daughter loves me a lot and uh, more than my uh, boy more than, more than my kid so it it I, i observed it i observed it that if you are providing them the opportunity if you are uh, socially emotionally support them you are understanding them and you are giving the opportunities to them according to their abilities according to their aptitude what qualities they have you have to support them that is the important thing because laws are laws are there but when a, a woman is is in the house and they are uh, they are uh, and she is alone there and feeling uh, loneliness or despair and even depression sometimes so this is the critical situation and uh, in that in that situation as a father or as a brother or as a husband or as a you know son we have to mold we have to support that lady because uh, if you are not supporting the things will be not changed so this is my point of view we have to change the attitude of the society and this will start from the school as i told you earlier if you are not teaching okay. these things in the curriculum at the school level it will you know suddenly it will not you know learned by the people if uh, i will say to someone today and he will follow all the things from tomorrow that won't be happen and uh, these are the things we have to develop with the passage of time we have to uh, mold them in that manner because policies and legal aspects are different thing but and because tradition in india in pakistan bangladesh or in the sri lanka the tradition is totally different there are lots of traditions and you know lots lots of responsibilities are you know uh, are you know only for girls only for women they have to do uh, if they are you know uh, ill they are not ill every responsibility okay. they have to perform so this is not the right to pay uh, to treat the girls because uh, you know loneliness is very serious because sometimes uh, temporary times of loneliness is common but if a, a girl will feel chronic condition with serious harmful effects on physically and mentally chemical change will be take place in her body her body there are lots of glands are there in her body they will secrete chemicals and the the, the stress and you can say the finally depression they will feel so these things uh, won't uh, we should uh, we should avoid all these things so this is the uh, my opinion okay let us uh, all know from the horse's mouth karishma can you please tell us the scenario what you are really facing and what has happened to feel you alone what is the scenario that is going on <laughs> Monita, I th- I think the the language was being misinterpreted by everyone. That aloneness was not a sad aloneness on my yeah, part. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The aloneness was a aloneness of a strength. Devyani, yeah. just 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 recall it. Okay, I am not feeling alone sadly. Okay, I'm happy to be alone and fighting for it, and that too with a single manner. So I am happy to be alone. That aloneness was of happiness. not of sadness fun thing okay 
and i am much more happier because as a girl i stood and fighted for my rights and the boys didn't do like that the five male generalists who were males who who didn't fight for their rights and i was happy alone a single woman fighting for my rights so that is a cheerful aloneness okay and see there are two types of aloneness one is uh, you are on the state of being alone and as one uh, more lady was there she told the state of Stephania. solitude we all are in the state of solitude whereas we are in the state of peace we are in the state of being happy within ourselves okay and we never require anyone to be with us whether it is our family supporting us or not we don't even care because we know if whether if we are truthful person if we are honest person then god is always with us and we don't care who is against us if the god is with us we don't really care who is against us so this is the one thing that if i am fighting alone i am very happy fighting it alone okay i am not sad and if any of the women is feeling alone then she should she should remember that she is never alone in her life god is with her always okay so to all very the women if you are alone don't feel that you are alone god is always with you it is god is always with the honest people so you know regarding uh, regarding my life i am never alone in my life my god is with me always and you all beautiful people are with me and my sister beautiful sister is always with me so you know how can i feel lonely and alone okay so that definitely that Anta, alone was in misunderstood what is the scene actually what is the thing you are fighting alone may we all know and can we be prepared for our other ladies too so that you can be the bold yeah. voice for them also okay actually so i so it is like i have been fighting for two issues okay two issues continuously back to back back to back okay, okay. Uh, the day okay. i completed my meditation i i just if you remember monira i told you i am in a silence meditation program yes. where i have to observe the uh, fast of mon vrat okay so after completing yeah. that i went to a saloon and uh, the saloon uh, owner misbehaved with me and uh, told me that do whatever you want he didn't give me uh, the services proper services and appointment and the appointment he gave me was not fulfilled enough so when i complained about the attitude of his staff uh, receptionist so he told to do whatever i want so you know after that i did a fir against him i filed a case against him and then he was called to the police station and then uh, he said apologize to me and he uh, told that he will take care of it next time this was the first issue and uh, yesterday what happened we were invited for a uh, press coverage at uh, the industrial area okay and uh, when as soon as i was taking the press coverage i was obstructed in front of hundreds of people not to take the coverage uh, for press okay but they didn't in, in informed in the priorly before the meeting that press coverage is not allowed okay so that was my main objection that if you didn't want a press coverage why have you called us why have you wasted our time and called us and invited us and moreover if you didn't want a press coverage why had you not told before the starting of the meeting that coverage is not allowed so for that we are also fighting and with me five other reporters were also insulted but the thing is being a girl i am fighting and the male persons are you know backing it up and they are not fighting so that's my fight and i am continuing for it and you know there would be back to back more and more issues since we are journalists so there would be back to back more issues so you know i am just prepared so from continuously one week i am fighting with all these issues some with the saloon owners some with the and you know what i did i did a press coverage of that saloon owner too who said you can do whatever you wish to so he thought he is challenging a girl and a girl cannot do anything so i took his press coverage and and all the parlors of gandhi dam where i stay all his news was spread all his wow. news was spread yeah. and in front of the police he has to come and say to me sorry oh but uh, uh, karishma ma'am uh, uh, actually uh, you are right uh, you are aware about all these things and you have taken these decisions because this is all happened because you are aware and you are in the field of uh, you, you are saying you are in the field of uh, 
mass media but uh, i am talking about general in general manner not in the specific Hi. cases we are talking about in, in general in general manner if you as a exactly. uh, media reporter will go to the villages you will find a lot of women and the ma- girls they are not, not treating like uh, you know equally and uh, even i am i i was a teacher at a school level as well now i am in university <coughs> people from different parts of the country comes to my you know uh, my university and i observe that they don't have such uh, awareness like you told because you are you was aware and you have taken such bold steps in uh, you know against them but exactly. many women in their family many girls are there in the families because uh, they because their parents says this is your husband you have to follow there is no no there is no need to complain him there is no need to go outside so these are the thing these are the general perspective of the society i am not talking about uh, you know uh, talking about the specific cases like you me and the munira ma'am those who are educated those who are those who are living in the cities those who are those who are aware about rights they those are know how to use their laws and how to use these things that is okay but yes. men sexual harassment at workplace is a common problem i as a teacher i i read many articles in the many journals and sexual harassment is the common problem around the globe and at the workplace many girls are not uh, you know even they uh, they are feeling lonely in not in that manner feeling lonely means their mental state is not good uh, she is depressed yeah uh, she is not feeling well and she is in is she is living in fear she is thinking about all those things what happened with them so no one is there she is sometimes she wants to express uh, their views in front of others so this is the this is the thing i was talking about not only about the specific cases so acid attack if, if you talk about the acid attack acid attack throwing are a common problem in the society you know acid attack is a form of violent assault defined as the act of throwing acid or a similarly corrosive substance on the body to deform uh, his uh, you know face or the body parts so this is the big problem you know many in if you as a media person if you search that many people didn't you know uh, went to the police station and they didn't complain because uh, they they are poor they don't have the right they don't know how to uh, file fir they and sometimes uh, many powerful people comes to them and they say need no need to they settle down with them so rape is the another big problem again you know uh, so exactly. these are the things which are going on in the society uh, and uh, you know the and domestic violence is the you know very common problem if you visit uh, i visit many villages i i i i i t i also teach inclusive education marginalized group society paper is also i teach in which sc st obc minority and the uh, a woman and the marginalized tribes so bo- domestic violence is you know can be described as where one adult in relationship misuse misuse power in order to control another so it is the establishment woman is uh, facing all because you know as uh, as far as the person to personal personality is different if you uh, read the theory of multiple intelligence given by gardner in types of intelligence and types of personality every person is not the same every person is different in their mental ability in their in their actions so it is establishment of fear in a relationship through violence that includes other form of as abuse the violence may involve physical abuse or sexual assault and threat threats at times it can be more sub, you know and so such as making someone feel worthless so i was talking about that mental stage in which uh, women are and we have to you know to we have to find a, a a way by which we can you know you are you are you have your sister you and uh, i have my uh, wife my sister my brother my daughter i i i you know i know the rules regulations i am i have etiquette morality i am following all those things but what about the whole society what about the attitude attitude of the society as a as a whole so these are these, uh, these were the issues dowry system about dowry system it's a very common problem you know cruelty cruelty and dowry demand from the you know from the boy side to curtail the growing incidents of dowry torture and dow- dowry death many girls are not able to tell even even they are not telling their parents how can they will tell to the police station in the police station even they are not telling to their parents to their brothers so you are right but we have to aware them we have to sensitize them we have to you know uh, we have to 
give them the opportunity to be bold to be you know how to use these things in the environment and there is no need to be you know uh, there is no need to fear Arishma, this was my say something i guess karishma do you want to say something yes i i i want to say mama ji your all points are correct and 100% the problem with the woman starts herself at the beginning i told that does women wants their right because the problem starts from her home itself that is true yeah. but but you know majority of the things which the solution has not come okay any of the small matter the woman fights for the solution has not come okay but will you stop fighting for it that's no my, no that's i am actually if no, no, if a no, woman no, is mohammed sir listen to me main ye bol rahi hu main ye bol rahi hu can you can you understand hindi right can you understand hindi yeah yeah i am from delhi i can मैं ये बोल रही हूँ कि कोई भी कोई भी इशू हो चाहे रेप का हो चाहे डोमेस्टिक वायलेंस का हो चलो जो पुलिस स्टेशन में रिपोर्ट हुआ सॉल्यूशन नहीं आया कंटिन्यूएशन हुआ या जो भी हुआ बट मेरा सवाल ये है कि ये सब होता रहा तो क्या हम लड़ना ही छोड़ दें सॉल्यूशन नहीं भी आया तो लड़ना छोड़ दें सोल्यूशन ना यू डिडेंट गॉट माई पॉइंट आई वॉज गिविंग दोल्यूशन इट विल टेक टाइम यू कान चेंज Uh, more than uh, you know uh, 135 crore people in 2 3 days that attitude exactly. so it will take it will take time na it will take at least decade it it wo- it won't uh, suddenly the things will not change uh, like uh, you are thinking about because it will take time if uh, you are providing the opportunities at the institution level in the i was talking as a teacher because i am a teacher i mean i am talking about the curriculum if we are teaching them uh, in the practical manner in the curriculum that man and woman both are equal and the, we have to remove and eradicate all those points which are not beneficial for the society uh, from the curriculum so that is the important thing the other thing is that as a parents as a individual or as a society member as a human being we have to you know uh, we have to apply our responsibilities we have to you know uh we have to do all those all those things in the in the practical manner i am i am telling like that i am not telling that ki okay. there is no need to I, take I steps i have one point mr uh, jubair sir i am just asking monoy kumar goshal for one more, one just point that those who has fought already like karishma moni like karishma moni i am just symbolizing her one character okay just the one yeah. character or in the history jubair sir we had lot of karishma in the history right yeah. but why yeah. have we really awarded our this karishma moni's character like those who have been fought for their rights really have we have we done the great respect towards them or have we really done our part being the civil society have we really followed them what do you think molay kumar goshal from calcutta university the lecturer well it is not what i think but what the facts are first of all i would refer to our learned speaker from new delhi concerning religion religion does not teach to suppress women i mentioned this earlier and i reiterate that already in the very editions in the very first book of the holy bible the book of genesis we see that eve was created from the side bone of the man adam and this this simply means that she is equal to man she was not created from a foot bone or from a head bone so she is equal i already referred both the judaism or i should say sorry the jewish faith and the christian faith teach that women are holy women are powerful we had characters in the old testament like queen esther the root of the root of moabite this a root the moabite is sorry Anna, in the New Testament, there are many disciples of Jesus Christ, including, of course, Maria and Mary, um, um, and many others, various others. We see there were women, and indeed, they had a voice; otherwise, they would not be referred in the Holy Bible. But 
religion is often spread by human beings and not by God. And human beings, when they were mainly, mainly men, they often try to misinterpret God's words in order to gain advantage in the society. That's a fact we cannot deny. Now, returning to Dr. Karisma Murni's um, very bold statement, I would like to point out that too many women in our country and perhaps throughout the world, particularly in the developing world, are not aware of their rights at all because they do not even exactly. have the opportunity. Think about the villages in the developing world, those people who live in remote areas, they often do not have proper access to schools. So how can they be aware of the legitimate rights? Point number three I would like to make, that even those victims, I'm not referring to people who are part or who are staying in cities, who are, who have the opportunities of raising their voices, but I'm talking about those, and I'm saying the word poor, not meaning poverty, I'm meaning poor, meaning weak. Those whose voices are not heard in the villages, if they go to a police station, they are often sent back by the police officers, particularly if they want to launch a complaint against a powerful person, perhaps like the leader of that particular community, maybe a politician, maybe a minister, they have great problems in doing because, and this is why their family members often discourage them because their family may suffer in the hand of those powerful men. But you see, returning to another point made by this very young lady from India, I uh, have difficulties pronouncing her name, but she's very bold and I appreciate her, her bold, yes, boldness. And this is another point we need to make, touching any person against his or her will, and I'm referring to both men and women, tantamount trespass to the person, which has no justification at all unless the person consents or the person who is being touched is an offender or a deemed offender, for example, when a policeman arrests that person. That's a different issue. But touching any person, whether man or woman, a child or a grown-up, an elderly person or a baby, tantamounts definitely an offence in the eyes of the world. These are the points I wanted to make. So you see, we need to encourage people by educating them first. Unless yeah. they were aware, they become aware of their rights. They don't know how to act. That is a great yeah. problem yeah. in our country, in the most developing countries of the world, and throughout the world in various other places. I'm giving you two simple things I'm telling you from my own life. I myself lived in Europe 18 years from my youth. I left my parental home when I was only 17 years of age and never returned to India, even on a single visit, un un until I became 35 years of age. You see, d in during my stay in England, I wanted to help a lady, a housewife, who and whose family invited me for dinner. I just wanted to help her in the kitchen, washing the, the tablewares, etc. And she said, no. I said, well, I'm a customer, allow me. She said, no. No, because no man comes into my kitchen. She was an Indian lady staying in England. Her children were attending schools in England. Her husband was in England, and she said this. And another question which was often raised during my stay in Europe was, if I would accept the fact that my future wife would work, I said, yes, if she has a decent job to do, I have no objection. But if she is being oppressed, commanded by her boss, then I would object. That was my reply. And I maintain that view even today. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I want to, I I want to reply uh, one line. Uh, actually, I was, yeah. sir, you didn't got my point. Uh, I was saying that uh, values comes from religion and culture. It doesn't mean that religion is, is not showing the right things. It means 
people use religion people are using religion and their point in their favorable favorable conditions they are using it and uh, any religion around the world not saying that every religion is saying equal opportunities for both women and men so i would like to say only with a few lines there are very varied legislative safeguards and protection mechanisms for women but the ground reality is different if you visit india so despite all the legal provisions and government endeavors still women are not like a young scholar was saying uh, still women are not being treated as equal to men in our country sometimes we observe these things the practice of dowry i was talking about the dowry dowry is the custom and tradition and the practice of dowry dowry is still widely prevalent and female in infanticide seems to be a norm in the society and there are wide spread news of sexual violence against women in the every, in the in the cities as well i am not talking about only villages dowry death women owner killing domestic violence what about these things so the thing is that uh, uh, you know there have been great and commendable contribution of women over the years like karishma madam is now uh, and in the building of our nation and we must thank her for uh, for the same the, the bill of 33% reservation for women in elected bodies is a long pending issue that so far in the country now have passed and uh, uh, you know and many you know government is trying their best people in the society have to make themselves effective and issues and uh, as you said that uh, we have to aware them we have to educate them what your rights are and how can you use it this is the important thing if you are not awareing them how can how we have to use we must make an attempt of building a dignified image of women in our country once the image of equality is established among people it will last for long you will see people accepting the ideas once and these are thus established so in this respect you know our central government have taken a good steps and many ngos are working women commission is there but the thing is that as a human being every person have responsibility to do something Okay, Mr. 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 I would like to answer in a single sentence. Just something. You see, both dowry and acceptance of bribe or corruption are prohibited by law of our country, and yeah. punishable by law, even by imprisonment. But, like bribe, dowry is given, and the person who accepts dowry. is equally to blame this, this, like the person who gives the dowry like the person who gives the bribe is equally to be blamed like the person who accepts so actually do not give dowry actually do not dowry, then sir, actually by force actually sir this is the attitude of society for example yes. we like yes. someone yes. was saying like karishma or i don't know neha was saying that we are talking a lot but in the practical manner our attitude is different we are saying that when i will marry my daughter of of my daughter so i will say that dowry is a uh, dowry is a bad custom but but when i will marry my son then i will say oh if they are giving their willingness that is okay so this is the this is the attitude of the society so we have to change that attitude i was talking about yes. the attitude change exactly okay. and we are asking just one more thing the question can you please ask the question to divyani divyani i want to know one thing that in your school uh, is there any personality like karishma who has been treated uh, some suppose they have been treated badly by others or negatively by others in your school or in your uh, surrounding do you have fighter like karishma have you seen ever may i know your experience please divyani oh. Uh, yes the i don't know about uh, most probably about schools because uh, in schools they don't share with their students uh, that uh, what is happening with the teachers and all they don't show in this uh, surrounding like that but uh, i have seen one girl that uh, in my village uh, she was a teacher and she was a uh, teaching in a school uh, where uh, many means a person many male male was uh, male teachers were there and why she was not promoted that uh, she is a female she can't run the school properly for that 
so uh, she was many times she was not promoted again and again so she asked means why she has not promoted why her salary is not increase and all so what uh, her um, means chairman told her that uh, you are a woman you can't uh, rule the school properly more than the man so uh, uh, she told no so I, uh, if you will give me a chance if you will give me a chance i can run she told like that so he told no i can't trust you because uh, it is about my reputation of the school if you will not uh, run properly my school will uh, my school reputation will be down so uh, she told so please give me one chance i will try my best if i will not run i will resign tomorrow she told like that so he told okay if you are ready with that i will give you the permission then he gave that and you can't believe the now that school that see, that lady only now own the school now she is the owner of that school because of her wow. hard work that chairman wow. give wow. Her, give her that, that the that owner that teacher. school yes uh, so the so we can so do anything and uh, i'm really sorry to karishma ma'am that i misunderstood ma'am but i really i'm very lucky to be the uh, guider like you i'm very lucky to be the sister of such great personalities like karishma ma'am the you and so there are many guidance but i have a question with uh, uh, i have a question with jube so that so told that uh, we can the mindset we can change the mindset of uh, people in two three days crore people but see so that girls are fighting from thousand years okay let it be thousand year we are in 2021 at least we are fighting from 20 years but why the people why the surrounding want us to do what they want so actually that your question is very valid actually people uh, we have to make people like karishma and you raise your voice if you are right. if you will not right. if you will not Can raise your voice clap? that voice clap? amplifies directs and change the change the scenario if you are not raising your voice nothing will happen support one another as a girl as a human being many people are uh, not all the men so are not bad uh, support one another in the you know society acceptance share the workload and uh, share the responsibility of creating safe environment for vulnerability to be freely expressed get involved and uh, educate next generation because next generation will come so if we plan right now then the next generation will change so know your rights and apply those those rights in practical manner and join the online uh, you know platforms as well because social media is a good platform right now and give the cause give to the cause it takes is is it takes time effort and you have to make efforts like karishma madam was saying that i many people didn't take took a step but i i am taking so if you are taking a step so give the cause and make some steps if these things will be you know done by our women or our men in society then the things will exactly. change otherwise so super, but 100 super. peoples are raising their voice and on that only 20 persons are getting their rights why so because 100 are also giving their 100% but why actually, only 20 are getting actually neha you know everything doesn't change in you know in days you know if it is happening from the last yeah. 2000 3000 years so we can't change in 1 2 3 4 5 years after you know united nations uh, is also doing work and many conventions has done so many and our government you know central government also made make made many steps even like like you people like neha and karishma and sa and the munira ma'am all other members are present here we need people like us we need platform like this so we many people will you know listen you watch you then they will realize what is the right, Dubir, sir, what are the right one thing you know that we are organizing program regularly and you people from europe they are telling that they are not even confident enough to participate in this sort of program so can you can you see the difference onira <laughs> corruption program too onira corruption program too yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. yeah seriously karishma yeah Jumir, sir and mono sir Vivian, I'm telling Actually, you, I have got their real statement. They are shaky. They are not confident enough even to speak virtually. Yeah, 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 yeah. Actually, ma'am, uh, I, I also, I also observe this thing because many people from Europe 
uh, I have attended many conferences and uh, as a keynote speaker uh, with the UK. So many people were not very confident about the cultural issues, about the social emotional aspects, about the inclusive setup, about the uh, you know needs of the students. So there are lots of things. I think they they don't know about the culture and the traditions, and uh, uh, they are hesitant to talk about on this topic. Yes. Uh, sorry to interrupt yes. you. But I have one Molo question sir, with Molo your sir. Your microphone is off. Molo sir, your microphone is off. My Speak microphone. Go ahead and ask Hello? young lady. Yes. Okay. Uh, we, can I ask a question? Yeah, yeah, yeah please. please ask. Yes, please. Uh, Molo, yes. so that we can see that uh, even everyone is uh, uh, registering the cases, what is hap happening in the surrounding. But we can see that to fight the cases, we need a money that we need a lawyer uh, who can fight, who can uh, take our case to the next level. So what about the right. poor people who, who can't afford that? So how they can fight for themselves? Because we know that without money, we can't live in this world. We have seen this, all things. So what about the poor people? They also have to, they also want to fight for themselves, but due to money, why they can't fight? You see, this question has to be answered in two parts. One in theory and the other, unfortunately, in reality. In theory, there is something called legal aid service. That is, if a person is to go, he can go to an office which arranges a lawyer for them and that lawyer should represent the client to the best of his or her ability. That is the theoretical side and of course the court has also the authority to appoint a judge sorry appoint a lawyer an advocate to represent a complainant if that complainant cannot do it in his or her own capacity or ability but practicality is again based upon corruption not listening to which, is destroying, which is destroying our country oh, and sorry, your voice other is, countries is not of the world. clear we are having some problem, I, I think. <coughs> Sorry, are you, sir? Can I mean, voice is clear. Voice is clear. Yes, Actually, I can sir, hear. Voice is clear. Network. All right. Network. All no, right. Clear, so clear. It's clear. I can As I said, is often hampered, even destroyed by corruption. Almost in every part of our system, there is something called bribe is taken in practice de facto and a blind eye is turned towards them by those in authority that is hampering it but now you see returning to this freedom to raise voice is maybe quite quite clear for us those who live in large democracies in the world whether this is our country, India, whether this is many of the European countries like Italy or Germany or England or United Kingdom as a whole. But you see, there are too many countries in the world where people, if they raise their voice, they are not merely suppressed or oppressed and persecuted, they're even killed. I am not referring to the country by name, but you know, this country has been celebrating their 100th anniversary of something today, a very powerful country in the world. In the late 80s, innocent people on the street, innocent students on the street, were killed brutally, inhumanely, because they wanted to raise their voice. And today's country, which was once a British colony, Many young people are suffering tremendously because they are no longer permitted to raise their voice, controlled by that large and powerful country. Many countries in various uh, parts of the world, including in Latin America, in Africa, in Eastern Europe, many young people are afraid to raise their voices like many, unlike many of us today here in our countries, because they are made silenced, if I may use the expression in speech marks or inverted commas, 
by the powerful authorities. It is too sad, it is regrettable, it is tragic, it is pathetic, but it is equally true. And that is the problem. Okay. But My again, question we now just starting out. Out. Every drop of water counts in the water, in the ocean. Every single drop is important. Every single lamp that we light in the dark world lightens the world a little brighter. Thank you. Thanks. Karishma, Bye. I have a question for you that as uh, you are a bold voice, as you are acting very bold voice, so it is your great responsibility also on your shoulder to to awaken other women as well. I think so. So what is your initiative and action plan for other women, Karishma? The same uh, answer uh, I would like to give to Divyani as well and to other women as well. Uh, I was, you know, uh, remembering a story of a movie that uh, don't sehen mat karo. You know, sehen mat karo. People will ask you to let go, but I would say don't let go. You know, once you started doing the let go in life, then forever you have to do the let goes. Okay, forever in your life. So if you don't feel until and unless that this should not be let go, then don't let go. Whether it is this much small thing, don't let go. Otherwise, you have to suffer forever in your life. Forever. You know, uh, the teacher uh, has, you know, abused you without any mistake. Let go. Your father has shouted on you without any of your mistake. Let go. You have faced lots of challenges in life. Let go. Your friend has dished you. Let go. Let go, let go, let go. And our totally life has been you know depressed and all and then people will think that she is a woman and you know we can do whatever we want to do and uh, uh, she must be very emotional kind of a personality and we can misuse our emotionality and all we can take a uh, advantage of our emotionality and all so don't let go and and you know just start fighting just start fighting whether it is a small issue just start fighting just, just just do it whether it gets any response or not you should feel happy that you took a stand for yourself you should feel happy but don't let go and take a stand for yourself at least whether it is this much small matter in the family or in the external world in the surroundings in the friend circle but if you don't feel this point is right in the family as well as in the friend circle in the external sources don't let go, stand for yourself and start fighting. Let people think you are a fighter. Let people think to be a fighter. But uh, I would, sorry. But I would just say uh, that uh, take a stand for yourself. Or, paisa ho nahi ho, koi farak nahi padta. Koi farak nahi padta, paisa ho na ho. But, paisa nahi ho ke bhi, hum log kitna lad sakte na, wo farak zarur padta hai. So just take a stand for yourself. Papa ho, mummy ho, kuch bhi galat baat pe aapko samjhaye ki nahi, aisa nahi, jane dena chahiye, choti choti baat pe issue nahi karna chahiye. Kyun issue nahi karna chahiye bhai? Choti choti chize aage ja ke badi banti hai. So just take a stand for yourself. This is my, you know, tumko hak mil hi nahi sakta jab tak tum sen karte rahoge. Tum, Bhagavad Gita, in Bhagavad Gita, Krishna too said, के समझाने से लोग समझ जाते ना तो बांसुरी बजाने वाला भी माबारत कभी होने नहीं देता है ना समझाने से अगर लोग समझ जाते तो बांसुरी बजाने वाला माबारत होने ही नहीं देता तो यहाँ के लोग ऐसे हैं नहीं हमारे हिंदुस्तान के के समझाने से समझ जाएंगे तो कभी कभी समझाने के लिए स्टैंड लेना पड़ता है फाइट करना पड़ता है अगर लगे ये मैटर छोड़ने जैसा नहीं है बहुत हर्ट कर रहा है तो अपना स्टैंड लेना चाहिए और कोई सपोर्ट करे नहीं करे हमें लड़के खुश हो जाना चाहिए क्या ठीक है हमने लड़ा हम खुश है भले उसका कोई रिजल्ट आया नहीं आया नो no प्रॉब्लम सामने वाले को हमेशा याद रहना चाहिए कि हमने एक गलत लड़की से पंगा लिया है राइट मनीरा 
I don't have words to applaud Did or learn it, express it my feelings. Did our learned speaker understand the Hindi? That is a question. Our learned yeah, speaker. Yeah, we understand. We understand and we speak very well. Stefania, uh, I can't see her anymore, but I hope she understood Hindi. Otherwise, it would be very unpleasant for her. All of all of us can understand. Is Jubair sir there? I think Jubair sir, can you please share your last message to the international community? We are going to conclude. Please share your last message. Is Jubair sir there? Yeah. Jubair sir, your your microphone is off. Okay, okay, okay. Sorry. Yeah. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. Actually, my last lines are these: uh, We have to, like Krishna was saying, we have to raise our voice, and we have. If we will, you know, if we are suffering from suffering anywhere in the society or anywhere in the education, in any, you know, any any walk of life, we have to be, you know, uh, be careful at that time, and we have to oppose. And uh, as a human being, uh, we have to. Uh, play a vital role and as a human being as a parents we have to give some good etiquette and morality as well and uh, in my opinion uh, things uh, sometimes we have to change the society in very silent mode as well if we, you are a, you are a, you if you are clever and if you are if you know psychology and if you know how to take work from others so that would be a good thing so overall uh, you know Every person have their individual, uh, you know, responsibility. They have to perform, and uh, then definitely things will change. Things will change, and uh, women will also get the opportunity, uh, you know, in all walks of life. Because nowadays, when we see women, and they are facing a lot of problems, like Karishma Madam was saying, and the Neha was saying, to what is the sol? What are the solutions? So solution will be come, but. Uh, we have to work a lot in, at the initial level. So we have to, uh, you know, for example, uh, I, uh, leadership quality must be there in the women's and gender equality and equal opportunity, inclusion, non-discrimination and good, healthy, safe. And like Karishma was saying that you should be happy. Your, ha your health system, your safety concerns, your freedom, you should take steps against violence. Education is like Sir was saying that education and awareness and training is the important part uh, to you know develop these things. So these are the things we, uh, we can do in our society and community leadership as well, community engagement, because uh, uh, transparency and community, you know, they will also work. And uh, these are the things we can you know do in our society. Human rights are the fundamental rights, and every girl or woman or man they have rights. And they are universally recognized and you know guaranteed to, to guaranteed to all because of their inherent nature as human beings. So universal human rights are based on the principle of equality, dignity, justice, fairness, and uh, uh, you can say mobility. So there is no exhaustible list of human rights. So we have to provide these things to all of them in the society. Then there that would be you know, good for all the persons. Wow, superb. So may I connect, uh, Divyani, what is your last message to the world? The, my last message to the world is only three things that is, uh, three sh uh, S should be there in their life. That is self-confidence, self-respect, and self-stand. If you are confident in yourself, then you can stand in any condition, anywhere you can fight for yourself. Self-respect should be there. No one should be there who can, uh, no, who can uh, talk on your self-respect, who can question on your self-respect, who can uh, broke your self-respect, no one should be there, that you have to be in your self-respect. And another I told that uh, self-stand, self-respect, and confident enough, so these three things will be there in yourself, then you can stand anywhere, you can fight anywhere, and you will find a way anywhere if you want. Thank you. Okay, Jubert sir, I have question for you. That how can be a speaker like you? Can you teach me? Any tips for me? Sorry, ma'am. Jubert sir, how yeah. to be a speaker like you? Is there any tips for me? 
actually i am a teacher so my duty is to teach my students so this is not my area women empowerment i am teaching the psychology bed or med students or special education students but this was interesting topic so i i you know accept your uh, you know invitation so tips are these uh, if you have, actually the analytical thinking must be there if you are hard working you have you must uh, your goals must be clear you must be hard working and uh, your analytical thinking when we talk about in education cognitive affective and psychomotor domains so we have to be strong in all those domains uh, for example cognitive is the knowledge information affective is the emotions like uh, neha was saying uh, uh, we have to motivate and the self esteem and self efficacy or the reinforcement that is much needed if you are not confident you are introvert in nature you are not able to express your views that nothing will happen the other thing is that psychomotor psychomotor means uh, your uh, your motion your ability is to performances and learning by doing so practical experience in the society you have to take practical experience practical exposure from the society you can learn a lot from the people when you observe if you are a good observer you are you are observing the things uh, as a teacher i i before the teaching during the teaching and after the teaching i observe my students i i always assess their previous knowledge wow. and uh, what they will have learned what the things they will have to learn in future for clinical and remedial teaching so this is the this is, these are the points you have to follow okay thanks a lot what is your last message monoj kumar goshal from india i just want to recall a children's rhyme probably known to all of us little drops of water little grains of sand form the deepest ocean and the enormous land yes so let every single drop of your voice be counted and remember a light a lamp does not shine for its own glory but for others so let your voice be heard not merely for your own selves let your voice be heard also on behalf of those who cannot speak up or speak out or are too frightened to speak up or speak out on their own so let your voices be heard also on their behalf thank you yeah, okay thanks. karishma the wonder women can you please guide us how to be powerful like you just one sentence don't be a bechari type of woman be a strong woman okay empower yourself don't wait for others to empower you okay empower yourself which is already within you just you need a little bit of petrol take that petrol from the god and empower yourself and do the blast drop the world because you are a woman and feel proud that you are a woman thank you so much so it was a great time so if you have time tomorrow you get time to help please connect yourself i will give you the link all of you i, I know molly sir cannot join i don't know about jubet sir and karishma and divyani if you have time jubet sir will you be free tomorrow at 4:30 indian will, time ma'am i will tell you in the morning actually my my have i have classes in the morning session so if i i i won't take classes then it will be comfortable for me so in indian time what okay. is the time 4:30 okay i will try to join okay karishma are you free for tomorrow 4:30 okay i i have classes at 5 same zumba classes at 5 so it's like that this time 8 8:30 9 time is very much comfortable i think we can have one okay. one and a half hour for this okay so uh, divani if you have time i will send you the link and jubesh sir yeah the of the course link. Okay, yeah okay. so tomorrow we will connect uk and uh, because uh, that person is very much uh, connected with uh, uh, the 